It is 631 following the meeting of the Waitley Town Select Board to order. First order of business, reviewing the minutes from January 16th. Any comments or questions? No comments from me. And none from me either. I move that we approve the meeting minutes from January 16th. A second. Any further discussion? Nope. No. Vote, Joyce? Aye. Julie? Aye. Aye. Vendor and payroll warrants. Any comments? None. 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 Public comments. Do have anyone? No one in the room? Anyone online? Nope. Moving on. Scheduled appointments. Uh, we have an appointment with Nick Spagnola to discuss operations of Club Castaway. Apparently, Nick was unable to make it tonight. But we still need to make a decision on extending the current variance, which expires next week. Um, and the question of whether to continue as it is, modify, or terminate the variance. Uh, a modification has been requested to cut back on the required police detail by one night to. I remember eliminating Thursday requirements. It was just a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Friday, Friday and Saturday. Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Uh, we have a note that we received, Brian received from the police chief detailing the couple of incidents that they have been alerted to, which seem, to my mind, to have been rather minor incidents that essentially could have happened at any bar. Right. Yeah, uh, the, the thing that struck me about those, Fred, was that not so much that um, an incident happened or not, uh, and whether it would have happened at any other bar, um, but that they handled it the way they told us they would handle it. Yep. So there's some track record there. And, and that our chief of police, the way he described their response um, was, I was very heartened by that. I I, I think that's um, that's important anyway, to me that yeah. I got that in writing. Yeah, from the I, I was going to recommend that we, uh, at least my position is I would go with a modification to eliminate the Thursday night requirement. If the chief says he's okay with it, I see no reason for us to micromanage him to tell him no, he's wrong. And um, then we get to review this in four months. Right. Right. And we, yeah. So he, he, even though Nick wasn't able to make it, I I think you can safely review the and extend the current variance for another four months. And I would suggest that we make that change to not require detail on Friday, on Thursday night. Any? I, I would agree. Okay. We need, to we need, we need a motion. Okay. Not exactly um, sure. Go ahead. No, no, I, I'm not ready. I think one of you should make the motion. I think Fred, all, I, I, Fred I, almost I, made a motion. I, I move that we extend the current variance for uh, club cast away for another four months with one modification, and that is to eliminate the requirement for a police detail on premises on Thursday nights. Second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. Vote, Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Aye. Moving along. COVID-19 rapid tests continue to be available, town offices, library, and police station. Next item, to review, discuss, and vote on a letter of support for a grant application to support the hiring of a shared conservation agent. Brian, can you give us any background on this? Yeah, so this has been, I mean, this is really the second, the second year of this discussion yeah. about the need for a shared conservation uh, conservation agent between the uh, some of the towns. There was initially a study done by the FERCOG to see if there was a, if 
of a shared position was something that the town should be interested in. And the results of that study seem to indicate yes. So there's been two or three meetings between the interested, the interested towns, and several have 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 dropped off, and there's sort of been this um if, if I can interrupt just for the record, the interested towns are Ashfield, Buckland, Goshen, Bali, Waitley, and Williamsburg. Yep. Um and Conway was initially interested, but are no longer interested. So what what the those towns are looking to do is apply for a, a efficiency and regionalization grant from the state to hire a shared conservation agent. Um, so these grants will typically pay for the startup costs and Sometimes the sort of the operating cost of the initial of that initial year to try to help the municipalities get the, the position established. So that's what we're looking for here. There has been some discussions about the the I don't want to say the type of shared conservation agent, but whether whether the boards really needed an administrative, whether they needed administrative support or more professional support in the sense of the agent was uh, really knowledgeable about wetland laws and all those other types of, you know, uh, could could do the, the work of the conservation commissions as a typical agent, as opposed to somebody who just really helped the chair for their administrative work. Mm -hmm. um, I think the preference, if, well, I, I'm not sure where it's going to come down um, in terms of the group, but it, it, it's also that you know, it may be a mixed quote. It, depending on what the town needs, that's what the agent is going to be asked to provide. So hmm. I think there's a trend towards having somebody more towards the professional side, knowing that there's going to be administrative work. Mm -hmm. right. um, so at last year's town meeting, the town wait the way we set aside ten thousand dollars for a shared conservation agent. If you remember that discussion, so that. Because we because we um, appropriated that money out of free cash, that's still set aside in the account because we really weren't certain that it was going to happen in FY24, and we didn't know how much it and we didn't know how much it was going to cost. So um, in the the conservation commission budget for FY25, there's a request for an additional five thousand dollars because it's looking like it's going to be possibly around fifteen thousand dollars if this grant comes through. Then those costs, depending on what the, the grant amounts are, the, those costs would be smaller for that first year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. On the uh, professional professional versus administrative, which uh, they're not really opposites, um, uh, is it really have to? It doesn't really have to be either or, right? Correct. We can have someone who is fully capable professional who sometimes may have to do some administrative work. That the the value is really in the professional. Right. Um, that was my understanding, and especially that uh, that was certainly Scott's argument when he came to talk to us about it. Yeah, yeah. The the need is for the professional help, so administrative help would certainly be appreciated. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, and each town was different. I attended several of the meetings, and each town is different depending on their situation. If they have, if they have a, a really the the comfort of their conservation commission chairperson with the wetlands regulations and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. But certainly as as a lot of and a lot of the people were in Scott's case is the same. They're they're older and they've been they they're really experienced, but they're looking to cut back. So there's a concern that when when these really experienced members cut back, they'd like to have that <laughs> professional support to mm -hmm. to fall back on. So yep. So this is just a, a letter of support for the, the, the grant application. All right. I hope I did. Yeah, I, I, I had sent Brian a couple of really wording edits uh, in the fifth and sixth paragraph, which could be incorporated in just they don't change the tenor or meaning of the letter in any way. Yeah. Got me to read them? Or yeah, one. Um, paragraph five. So that is 
the paragraph starting second. First word is right here. Second. Yeah. Yep. Paragraph five. Change likelihood of burnout among commissioners would decrease with professional assistance. Change that to likelihood of burnout among commissioners would greatly increase without professional assistance. Hmm. And okay. then, oh, go ahead. Then uh, the next one was uh, change the next to last sentence of paragraph six from quotes by obtaining funding, including for startup costs, it will allow towns to obtaining funding, including startup costs, will allow towns. Good heavens. So you just strike out by? Yep. Yeah. But yeah. uh, we'll strike out by and it. Right. Yeah. Just and then who knows if it needs the comma anymore? Yeah, a little syntax thing. Okay. Does it seem reasonable? Um, yeah. They don't seem to, they don't change that significantly in the wording. Is no. Better. I would move that we uh, uh, support the letter for grant application. Second. As amended. As amended. Thank you very much. Second as amended. Any further discussion? No. Joyce, vote. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. Next, to discuss sign request from New England Animal Eye Care at the intersection of Sandy Lane and Long Plain Road. Yeah, so um, we received an inquiry from New England Animal Eye Care about placing a sign at the intersection of Sandy Lane and Long Plain Road. Currently, there is one sign there now. Mm -hmm. um, it is a it's two posts with a, I don't, know, I don't even know, it's it's, Fun. it's easy to miss. Um, and it, it's a cabestro sign, formerly here for the thing. And obviously there's there's no other indication that there's anything down Sandy Lane other than that sign. It's difficult to see, it's not visible. And I wasn't sure if that sign was in the public right away or whether it was on, um, I think that's Fairview Farms that owns the property there on the corner. And I did find out from Alan Sanderson that that sign is on um, Fairview Farms property and there's an agreement between, so Deerfield Europe, it was Deerfield Europe at the time in, in Fairview Farms to allow them a, a easement to have that sign there. So that sign is outside of the public right of way, or at least that's what the legal document show. Um, I talked to Keith a little bit. The, the, the town typically doesn't have, you know, we typically don't allow signage other than signage for, uh, you know, wayfinding and, and, you know, but I want to say street, motor, signs. Yeah, street signs and street signs that, that are allowed in the right of way with, with a few exceptions where the right of way might be particularly large, particularly wide. Um, so, so we have this request um, from, from the business and I, I haven't responded. I said we would talk about it tonight. Um, as to, as to how uh, how the town might respond, it could be that we say maybe have a conversation with Fairview Farms, see what, mm -hmm. see if there's any uh, appetite for uh, a sign on that side. And then I was thinking about it a little bit today in terms of it, well, maybe there was a, a could be a sign on the on on the town property. And then it it sort of brought me back to the the flag policy conversation that we had a meeting or two ago about if we open up the if we open up town property to sort of something other than temp I know we do temporary signs right mm -hmm. uh, but if we open it up to something more than temporary signs are we opening up Pandora's box of signs that yeah anybody could have request anything and then how do you know we don't really have anything in place to 
to, to make a decision as to whether. Right. But I, yeah. I am sympathetic to the request, though, because, you know, yeah. and um, I wonder if um, a policy could be made that we, um, that at our discretion, might allow signs for businesses in the industrial park. Yeah. And have that kind of, because that's the, that's to me the natural limitation to put on that sort of thing. Um, that it's really to help out our industrial park. It's not to just to have a place where everybody can put up an ad, right? Um, yeah. That might be a policy we'd have to write, um, but it doesn't have to be 16 pages either. I think it's something we consider for, for now, I think referring uh, be faster. To I care to Sanderson to Fairview Farms and see if they'll put up a sign, you know, can work out a way to put up a sign next to the other one that we wouldn't have to come up with policy under any kind of deadline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing that's always been in the back of my mind was there was, there's no, you see in other, other uh, parks or business park or industrial park, there's usually a directory sign at the park entrance mm -hmm. where it's that, right. you know, you see the right. bigger sign, each yeah. one has a, mm -hmm. you know, a tile or something yeah. that talks about that, but that would, that would take more coordination and uh, contributions from probably everybody in the park if it was going to be some type of directory sign, because we, we don't have this separate entity that owns the industrial park, but Deerfield right. has edict which is a separate entity that owns the park. And there's rules and regulations and all that kind of stuff. We don't really have that here. Yeah, so technically this isn't a park, it's just right, several buildings on the same street. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, I mean, I, I could suggest that they contact Fairview Farms unless we want to try to I do could, something I, on this side. I would think that should be the first try. Yeah, I would agree. That yeah. if, if the sign can be put up, would likely be of similar size and in a similar location to the other. Yeah. That's the quickest and easy, easiest solution for everyone, assuming they're farms. Mm. And I care can reach a solution. Yeah. And I would say it's, it's probably the, the fastest. Not mm -hmm. that we're particularly opposed to having a directory or in, uh, mm -hmm. or some sort of um, sign policy for this property uh, for the uh, for Sandy Lane, and that you know that we couldn't in the future do it. It's just that we're probably going to take longer, and right. the private owner can probably move faster. Yep. Right. Agreed. And if they're stuck, then I'll, or if they get a negative response, then right, then then come back here, and then we can start talking about another answer. Okay. Anything else we need to do on that? No. Next item to discuss, review, and vote on a special event application for the Black Birch Vineyard Road Race to be held on March twenty fourth. We yep granted this permit before, if I remember. And we would have yeah. any, had any problems with the event. Right. The entire right, the event, mm -hmm. the the pre and post race is in at field. It's just yeah. that it, it goes go through, up through um I think it turns around on Conway Road, I think the top of yeah. Conway, maybe. Yeah, can we uh, any but we've never had any comments? We've never had issues with, with no, no comments. Yeah, my understanding is they've already been signed off by everybody else. The copy that you sent us didn't have those signatures on them, but that's presumably the copy you have that has sign off from the police and fire and so on, right? Yeah, I think Jess has those. Have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't have any. I will move to approve the special event application for Blackbird Vineyard. Second. Second. Beat you. Julie. <laughs> Aye. Joyce. Aye. Aye. To discuss, review, and vote on district local technical assistance priorities for calendar year 2024. Brian. Yep. 
Here we go again, another year. Yeah. Um, let me share my screen for a second. I'll bring up the, the form. So you recall that Burkhard gets a certain amount of money to provide assistance to municipalities, technical assistance to municipalities. And the money comes from the state each year, from the state budget. So uh, accounts Burkhard always solicited uh, project requests from the municipalities. And they ask us to prioritize, um, you know, what we would like them to do with those funds. Mm -hmm. So we did reach out to the, um, so we did reach out to the planning board and they didn't discuss it at a meeting, um, but it was, uh, Grant had recommended um, looking at things that, that they had suggested last year. And one of those was uh, subdivision. Uh, what did I put it? Review subdivision regulations. Yeah, review subdivision regulations. <clears throat> that was that was the big one. Um, in terms of what happened last year with these DLTA funds, not not a whole lot. Um, at least for for the town, um, that was one of the things that we had requested uh, was the real kind of division regulations, and then it was sort of a mid year change in uh, a request to help with the the floodplain bylaw because that's a requirement that the town's going to have to meet is a, re a revised floodplain bylaw, and that was sort of you know that process has sort of been spinning I think without getting much traction. Um, mostly because if you're looking for guidance from the state, which was not forthcoming. So really the task here, the request here from the COG is that we would, or that the town would um, we would identify any of these that we're interested in. The last year I just wrote interested in the box on, on the left. And then we pick our top three priorities at the end here. Um, so this is, I asked Sylvie to provide uh, um, her recommendations. So I don't know what the best way to, to do this is. I don't know if the board has ideas or priorities or recommendations that they mm -hmm. the town to receive help with. It's at, I mean, it's really at for cog's discretion. We just provide the priorities and something, yeah. new, something new this year is that they, um, there was language about, you know, in, in the past, they've tried to really spread out the funding to make sure everybody had the opportunity to get some type of assistance, but it seems like they're going to scale back on that and try to uh, keep the funding more together to try to get more meaningful results, I guess. Yeah. Well, I didn't get to see the which ones Sylvie really liked. Um, I can see the one that's on that page. Um, I went through it and put check marks on a few, but I guess I don't really feel strongly about uh, about any of them. They just kind of floated to the top. And if I just throw those out there. Um, uh, uh, on the very first page there, I didn't put anything under the, uh, under the climate change adaptation. Um, cause I, uh, yeah, I, I just feel like we're a lot of farms already. We've got a lot of pollinator habitat, but, um, uh, that's, I'm certainly okay with thinking about that under, um, the economic development, the next section, I thought a regional housing plan might be a good idea for Franklin County. Um, but I don't know that that's 
um, I got that seems like it's something that's really got to be done by a group that's taken the whole county into account. And I wasn't sure if that was really very realistic. Although we've got a um, uh, housing production plan that's been approved. Yeah. So know. yeah. So that one, I thought, you know, yeah, we do need something regional. But I don't know that that's the best way to use this particular potential pot of money. Well, one thing I thought about was really important is IT training and policy development. Um, um, mostly and make sure that our employees are really well trained around cybersecurity. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that uh, I don't know if we really want to use AI in our local government. <laughs> uh, but uh, definitely I want everybody to really have the training and uh, information uh, about cybersecurity. So that one stuck out as one where, um, you know, that's a place where I think we sort of have some exposure. We don't necessarily have um, everything up to date on security necessarily just because we're a town, right? Um, the other thing we've talked about at this meeting are municipal succession planning because we've got retirements coming up. That said, the things they wrote here about, oh, have a citizens academy uh, and participate in career fairs and expos uh, just doesn't seem like, <laughs> those don't seem like realistic answers. Um, so I, I, that one, I'm, I think it's an important issue for us, but I don't know if this set of grants is the right place to look. Um, we also need a municipal wage and classification study, but I think we may have already got funds for this. Um, or we were planning to ask for funds at town meeting. I, I'm forgetting if it's uh, past or future. Um, and then on the uh, bottom of that page, where uh, strength and emergency preparedness and response. Um, here, the note I put was, could this be used to look at SCEM's uh, problem of the load that they're spending on Greenfield? Um, I think that came up uh, in some public comment uh, in the, a past meeting um, about how much of the mutual aid is going to Greenfield because Greenfield doesn't really have enough to cover their own needs. Um, and we, I we, we, we've was, talked I, about the scams. Yeah, I know it's, it's a scams issue. And, and, I, and again, I don't know if a grant in this area is really a way to deal with the problem. But that, it just struck me as a, a topic that is important for us. Um, and then the last thing I put a check mark by was older adult services. Um, and this, this might have come up under, um, under reports later on, but uh, we've been trying to get a feasibility study done for various buildings that are in the three towns for a senior center. And the $75,000 that uh, Deerfield got to do the feasibility study is just going to go right back to the source because they did not do it. It just, it fell through the cracks there. I think we still need a feasibility study. So I don't know if we can get enough money to do a feasibility study under that age and dementia friendly community planning because uh, they talk about senior center expansion and regional sharing. We definitely kind of come under those two categories. Um, but that's, I think, something we could really use if that were reasonable to expect from this grant. So that's my input to the conversation. I like the idea about um, senior center expansion because we are looking at trying to figure out, uh, and I'm disappointed to hear that that money it's just turning around and going right back to the source. Um, yep. But yes, I would love to put some, get some money to put toward that. I'm curious about public information and warning. Franklin County communities use multiple methods to pro provide public information and warning to their citizens. You know, during the recent floodings that we've had in the past year, I've had folks in various neighborhoods contacting me about, say, the dam. And the, and the reservoir that's up at the head of Conway Road, uh, going, how will we know if it's going to break? <laughs> um, and 
we really didn't know what we had in place to, to let people know. Um, I think it came out that police would go door to door if there was going to be a problem, but I, I would like to see that looked into. Um, I, I think that like some of the other things like Joyce mentioned, that's more of a county-wide thing than necessarily you know, specific to us because a lot of the, the issues would involve warnings across many municipalities. Yeah. Not not just here. Not just Waverly. Yeah. So is this money though for Franklin counties to go mm -hmm. together and work on that or well, I would assume this is supposed to be money that would be used to spend on these issues in Waverly. Right. As opposed to money yeah. that we're talking it what is the money uh, the, to assist our member municipalities on projects that promote regionalization of services and local and regional planning right um it sounds like this money is supposed to be used by franklin county assisting us as opposed to things that they're doing on their own which with general application Sorry, I'm totally not following you. I'm like, why did they put it in here if we're not allowed to ask for it? Well, no. <laughs> we, or we, if, we, if we, you're we, not, if we're not allowed to, but if it doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Or to if, if it's something that isn't necessarily, I don't know, there are a lot of things here that seem to be more purely regional than things that would be of assistance to individual communities. communities. <laughs> Yeah, and if like if Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley all put in for, uh, you know, something on the senior center, then that might stand a better chance as a regional, uh, as a regional thing. I think you would need. I mean, at this point, I don't know that we had had enough time to really talk to our neighboring towns about doing yeah. this. Yeah, doing I mean, something where we all go in there and say we need the emergency but, the but system. This, like, review of subdivision regulations. That would be. For us specifically, right. for us to look at our so you're saying that this is something we would want to coordinate with, right. as Joyce said, maybe right. towns. Okay, or or that. encourage the FERCOG to to do as you know, a county wide thing, not specifically not town for specific. us. Right. Okay. It, it's not entirely clear what what this all does. And yeah. as Brian indicated, there wasn't much money that came out of it last year anyway. So I don't know <laughs> that it's. Well, I think I, I on, this well had happy to go along the planning board's suggestion of reviewing subdivision regulations. If they feel they need assistance there, the IT training, older adult services. I think are things which we could certainly use. Okay. Really, anything else you want to add? No, 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 no. Uh, So <clears throat> I would I would suggest we make those our three top choices. And, uh, let's put the adult services number one. Subdivision two, IT training three. I don't know that it matters all yeah. that much. It may not matter, yeah. Um, although I, I must have overlooked the wellhead protection. That's also uh, yeah important. But I think do we do we not already have a wellhead protection plan? Hopefully, it's something along those lines. That's looking at water quality. Yeah, I was thinking wellhead protection plan would be like, what can you change in your bylaws to make it so your wellhead doesn't go away? Um, I know we did a lot of work down there um, to protect the wellhead uh, so 10-ish years ago. Um, my understanding is the main thing we have for protecting the water quality is the 
uh, the the you know the very the various districts we have the water protection district which isn't the same thing as a wellhead protection plan. Um, ours is near this kind of meandering river. That, well, uh, if, if you want to, yeah, do you want to add that instead of one of the others? Yeah, I, I actually think that public drinking water supplies would be really important. So, okay. yeah, I would bump one of the other ones. Yeah, and there may be better places to ask for a, a senior center feasibility study. Okay, I, I maybe uh, Sylvie can. Uh, because well, I, I mean, I want to value what Sylvie put into this because she may have a better idea than me about like what would actually get potentially funded in an amount that's meaningful here, and um, and it might be that pollinator habitat is something that they'll actually the funding they give you might be enough to actually make a difference there, but uh, as far as like uh, like other things seem like more urgent urgent needs for the town when I look through them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going with uh, subdivision regulation, wellhead protection, and IT training. Let's do that. Somebody yeah. want to make a motion? Uh, I, I move <laughs> that uh, our top three priorities would be uh, review of subdivision regulations, uh, wellhead protection plan, and IT training for, hang on. Yeah. For town employees. Thank you. What she said. Uh, yeah. Particularly around cybersecurity for municipal officials. Okay. I'll second. second. Either one. Any further discussion? No. Oh, Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. Moving right along. Uh, to discuss, review, and vote on a quote from Wasserman Audio to purchase and install audiovisual equipment for the second conference. Right. Yep. So the uh, we're trying to set up the second conference room. So the conference room that's over there in the back. Um, ever since um, the one that used to be the assessors. Yeah, the assessors' office used to be there. Right. Board of Health used to be there. Cemetery commissioners. Okay. Um, just clarifying which yeah we're talking about. Further down the hallway, um, we currently don't really have a separate um, second meeting room, so we think this will be good as as more boards and committees come back in person, that they can have the ability to stay to say hybrid essentially. That we could be broadcasting two Zoom meetings, um, you know, at, at, at one at the same time because that'll allow greater participation and transparency. Um, so Wasman Audio was, it was a different staff person, but they were the ones who recommended to set up in the room we're in now with the OWL and the, the flat screen TVs and, and those types of things. So uh, we asked them to come back and, and they met us and we walked through the other room and they're suggesting a, a similar setup. That's what this quote is here. Um, with a projector, and uh, we've already purchased that. We have a second um, owl that that we've already purchased. Um, so it's the it's the projector. Um, it is some things that I don't understand. Um, one flat screen TV on on the cart, and um, you know projector screen projector. Okay, and there's money in so in the PEG access capital. Fund. Yeah, so we so when we did this, when we paid it out of the um, the PEG access account, which yeah. is money that the town receives from Comcast as part of the franchise agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that money is to be used for public communication. Yeah, it's public education and government. I okay. believe is what. Yep. PEG stands for. Okay. So the sounds like the main difference is um, there would not be two screens on the little cart, right? Um, but there would be at least there'd be one screen on a cart. Is that right? Yeah. And there would be one uh, screen on the wall. 
right? So, okay. And that makes sense. Yeah, we would anticipate that that room would get less use than this one. So this would still be the primary one because this is the one. And it, it actually it's a conversation that I would, Joyce, maybe we can have sometime. I don't know if they could still go live from that room um, or if we would need another black magic box or, but that's a conversation for another, I think another yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, I'd want to ask John, basically, I think, um, that FCAT, he would yeah. know. And I mean, we can only go live. We only have, well, I assume we only have one channel to broadcast live on, so. Uh, correct, <laughs> correct. Whoever wants to broadcast live can, can right. have this room then, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the estimate is for $8,225.66, so that would clearly be covered by the account that has $37,000 in it. Yep. Any further discussion? No. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the quote from Wasmi Audio to purchase and install AV equipment for the second conference room. Second. Any further discussion? No. Vote, Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. 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 <laughs> Select for liaison updates. Uh, we had a first meeting with Brian, Keith, Michael Richard from uh, Western and Samson. Western and Samson concerning Highway Garage. It was largely a conversation between my Western Samson representative and Keith getting not so much specifications, but what what we would want in a highway garage as mm. far as um, what needed to be insulated and whatnot and how big and how tall and all that. And we will have a meeting, another meeting with a preliminary, I mean, we even report, but at least we'll have another discussion about two weeks. Weston Sampson, and the only other thing I have is from the Skems boo that the new chief Joshua Sparks begins on February, starts work on February 5th. And we all I also understand that conversations, at least preliminary conversations, have been had with Greenfield. There's a new mayor in Greenfield who was absolutely unaware of these issues with the billing and mutual aid, and that there will be continuing discussions with Greenfield about that issue. Um, that for, for last year, Greenfield, the number of calls that were made in Greenfield were roughly the same as the number of calls were made in Waitley. Hmm. But whereas Waitley contributes to scans, Greenfield does not. So we'll see what what can be done to yeah. try to alleviate that issue. Julie, any reason? Yeah, the most recent water commissioner's meeting was this past Friday, and I was not able to attend because I was out of town with no access to Zoom. But the previous one, um, they had been discussing the dumping by Baltazar. I think that's at 70 Chestnut Plain. Uh, we have looked at the test areas that a um, an environmental company had done, and I haven't heard back from folks on the Water Commission yet, but it looks like the testing sites were all done within 10 feet of each other, which seems a little close to each other, uh, depending on how large the actual mm -hmm. dumping area is. Um, yeah, I think it's bigger than 10 feet. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I'm going to follow up on that. I'm also curious about they're going to look into, they're going to contact the building inspector about a dumping issue on Westbrook Road. I don't know if either of you have noticed going up Westbrook from the bottom on the right hand side, there's a big open area and there seems to be trucks going in and out and dumping. They're trying to confirm that they're dumping clean fill there. Haven't yeah. had a response on that yet. Um, that's about yeah. it. 
Joyce? Um, we had, uh, since last time we met, uh, we had a little retreat, the boo for the South County Senior Center, where we um, did a whole bunch of um, thinking and talking about space. We have another little retreat scheduled for the February 10th, where we're going to look more at our structure. Right now, we are um, uh, kind of held together by an intermunicipal agreement, um, but an intermunicipal agreement is limited to what you can do. And so we're looking at what uh, kind of structures other towns are using. Um, Buckland and Shelburne uh, use one, uh, it's called a consortium, takes an act of the legislature apparently, but that might not be as hard to get as you might think. Um, because it's not very controversial, or um, like a nonprofit like FCAT is. Um, and uh, we'll probably continue talking about, you know, space is our big thing. We need a, we need a home. Um, I think I already spilled the beans on the, uh, the, uh, the not accessibility project, the, um, Oh no! Just the, yeah, they're, they're trying to they're trying to get uh, feasibility. That's what I want. Feasibility study uh, that's not going to get done. Um, and uh, I think we expressed sufficiently our disappointment to the Deerfield rep um, that they let that get through, slip through the cracks. And um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do about it other than try and find another source for some feasibility study money, which I think will be harder to do now that, uh, that, that that's happened, but you know, that's where we are. No, they are continuing to, they did an open house the other day and I, you might've seen it in the newspaper. I don't remember if that was yesterday or last, I think it must've been yesterday or today because it had pictures of people at the, um, at the open house, um, letting people see what the, building that we might potentially buy, but that's, that's going slowly and that's probably as it should be, you know, it's a big decision uh, for a town to make, to try and buy a building. So that's where things stand with uh, the main responsibility I have at this point. Okay. Or is, are you discussing the building that we might buy? Is that the former Sinauer, um, Oxford? Yeah, we were Oxford, yeah, we refer to it as the Oxford building. Oh, yeah, Oxford yeah. University. Yeah. 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 And well, side by side, since it since it does not look like we'll get in there anytime soon, we're also doing some Brian is helping uh uh come up with an RFP so that we can legally continue to rent the spaces we're renting now uh until we find our our final home. So okay. I give Brian a shout out for the support there. Anything else, Joyce? That's it. Okay. <laughs> Administrator report. Um, Center School RFP review update. The committee met once to review the proposals and put together a list of questions um, for the proposers to respond to. So we'll be meeting, well, I need to reach out and schedule um, a second meeting with the committee. Um, to review the responses and for the committee to discuss uh, next steps after that. Um, solar array town offices. The solar array town offices. So the interconnection application to every source has been submitted. And we are um, waiting, to, uh, waiting to hear back from that. Uh, we did decide to uh, do that meeting. I think I said that at the last one. Um, exit 35 study. Um, there was a request from the committee to our our primary consultant um, to uh, move forward with a market study of the area. And the consultant has hired, um, I forget the name now, I'm drawing a blank, um, has hired a sub consultant who has worked with the town previ in previous years. Um, I think it was actually the, the market study for the industrial park, if I remember right, um, to do the uh, 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 market study of that exit 35 area. And um, Fred talked about the, the Highway Department uh, facility programming study. Um, a couple other things I wanted to mention. 
had to do with, well, one of them is, and I think I forwarded this to the board. Um, so Mass Department of Agricultural Resources has received a, um, a request for an APR on River Road. Um, they call it the Galensky APR. Um, it's 52 acres. And uh, I can just share my screen real quick. What they're looking, what MDAR is looking for from the town at this point is really um, a response. And the three choices are um, the town does. Uh, the town is in favor and has appropriated funds, which the town has not. Um, the town is in favor and it will appropriate funds on X whatever date, which is kind of difficult to uh, give a give a certain date. We could estimate something if that's the way that we want to go. And then the third choice is the town does not support the project. Uh, okay. If I can clarify. The properties on River Road, yeah. across from Burley Park. Yeah. Two and the what is yeah. the APR and what do they want to do? So that's the it's an agricultural preservation restriction. Okay. So they're uh, essentially selling the development rights um, for the property, so on the, and it needs to stay in agricultural use. And so it's a it's a restriction that's held by the primary holder is the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And um, towns are asked to contribute a small component mm -hmm. of the purchase of the APR. Waitley, I think Waitley's percentage is 5% of mm -hmm. the total agreed upon value. So typically the town has funded these with CPA funds. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I did forward the inquiry from, uh, from the state to the CPC chair and the Ag Commission and I asked them to uh, provide feedback for the select board. And, um, and hopefully we can figure this out at the next meeting, but I just wanted to oh, okay. know that we had that inquiry. So I asked feedback from those from those two committees. Why this particular piece of land? Just I, I think it's just the there's a willing owner. Uh, okay. And I think it's adjacent to three other already approved APRs, two okay. or three other APRs. Thank you. When I was looking at the map before. Yeah, it's an application by the owner to the state. Oh, okay. Right. Yep. Um, yes. Got it. So the Board of Assessors has received notice of the retirement of their uh, staff person, uh, Cynthia, um, who is uh, planning on retiring on March 1st. Mm -hmm. So that position will become open and we'll be advertising it shortly. Cynthia has offered to stay on through April up to four hours a week to help with the, the transition and training of the mm -hmm. of the new staff person. So um, if anybody is interested in the position or wants to learn more about it, I'm sure they could reach out to the assessors, um, and, but we will be advertising. The Board of Assessors does the, uh, appoints that position, so um, they'll be making that appointment, you know, hopefully before Cynthia goes, in time for before Cynthia goes. So if anybody's interested, please uh, reach out to the assessors or to me. Okay. And um, one last thing. Um, so there is a project that the town, uh, the town of Sunderland is trying to um, work with MassDOT on. And it's a, it's a multi-use path. Um, I think it actually connects UMass to Sunderland, um, and it would actually go as far as um, Park and Ride. Right. Yeah. So it, yeah. So the initial one was to the uh, Mount Sugarloaf uh, parking lot on one sixteen, mm -hmm. with an extension, with a possible extension on one sixteen from uh, is that Sugarloaf Street? Sugarloaf yeah. Street to mm -hmm. the Whaley Park and Ride. Mm -hmm. um, so Sunderland was, was looking for um, to see if Whaley would support that project. I think it sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Do, do you have something 
do you happen to know uh, like they're just basically repurposing like one side of the road or the other to have a better walking and biking path is that right and so it would actually mean actual construction of something on the side of the road that is safe it's not just going to be oh we're going to leave it the same and call it a bike path yeah that's my understanding is that it, it would be a separate part of the roadway yeah we can get yeah. some more details mm -hmm. yeah 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 but I, I have no objection to that if we can get that that'd be great at this point it's a uh, it's it, it's concept right now mm -hmm. um so like particularly i think that you can talk to someone okay. yeah get us more you know when they have them yeah there's more details on it yeah okay is that it particularly if we're looking at the exit 35 redevelopment right. something you know a walking and biking path yeah. Within that area would be really beneficial. Are there any items not anticipated? Yeah. No. Uh, next meeting, February 13th at six o'clock. Six o'clock. Gonna get hit in my mind. Six o'clock. Six, six o'clock. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Second. Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Bye. Night, everybody. Bye.